Yo, what up guys? Welcome to Jack's Off to another adventure. So even though I grew up right here in San Francisco's Chinatown, I didn't really learn much about Chinese American history until I openly came out as a Chinatown enthusiast, went to go visit all these different Chinatowns, learn about the history, met the people there, and now I have a better understanding of this whole Chinese American history. Well, with that said, there's still a lot to learn, and today we will be going to Angel Island, a place that served as an immigration center from 1910 to 1940, where an estimated 200,000 Chinese people were detained before either granting entry to the US or being shipped back to China. This will be my first time going there, believe it or not. Super excited for another adventure. So if you want to learn more about Chinese American history, then join me as Jack's off to Angel Island. Let's go. As we make our way to Angel Island, let's talk about why the Chinese came to the US in the first place real quick. The first major wave of Chinese came during the California Gold Rush in the mid-1800s when China was ruled by the Qing Dynasty. The Qing was initially a very powerful dynasty, but they became too complacent and was unable to overcome numerous fatal problems like overpopulation, famine, land shortages, and corrupt government officials. Also, they failed to keep up with the industrializing European powers, so when the Europeans showed up with their superior weapons, the Qing had no way of defending themselves. Now, imagine life in China during the 1800s. Your country is dictated by foreign powers. There's a very small group of elites while everyone else is struggling. People are addicted to opium thanks to the Brits and Americans. There are violent rebellions throughout the country. Your government doesn't care about you. Basically, life in China sucked balls back then, so people were desperate for any opportunities elsewhere. Once the news of the California Gold Rush reached China, a lot of Chinese people, mainly those from the south who were closer to the ports, came to San Francisco in hopes of striking it rich. Aside from mining gold, Chinese people also built the Transcontinental Railroad and helped construct many of the West Coast cities. However, because companies were hiring the Chinese for their hard work ethics and cheap labor, many Americans accused the Chinese of stealing their jobs. So in 1882, Congress passed one of the most racist laws in American history, the Chinese Exclusion Act, that would exclude the Chinese from immigrating into the U.S. Angel Island would serve as an immigration center that also helped enforce the Chinese Exclusion Act, but more about Angel Island once we get there. Alright, check it out guys. You got the skyline of San Francisco right there. You got some jets flying over. There's the Golden Gate Bridge. There's Alcatraz. And I'm guessing that's Angel Island right there. That's kind of crazy. The Chinese people that came here from 1910 to 1940 What's going through their minds, you know, they were probably very nervous, very scared. They were about to get interrogated, one wrong answer, and they would be shipped back to China and not be able to come into the U.S. But fast forward to 2023, we got a bunch of Chinatown enthusiasts that are super excited to go on Angel Island. So over here, you can see some old military establishments. Prior to Angel Island becoming an uh, immigration station, it was also a place where they processed soldiers from World War I and the Spanish War. They would stay here before they were shipped out, and when they came back, they would be here for a few weeks before they went back to the mainland. So over here, you see some remnants of the old military complex over here. Hi, good morning. good morning. Wow, and 80 years later, the welcome here is actually pretty warm. Whereas back then, I'm pretty sure they were like, hurry up, get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> wow, progress. All right. But some things never change. The Asian squat. All right, here's the map. We are Nito, and we have to go Nito. So we got to go inside and then, yeah, let's do this. So behind us is the immigration station, but they're still not open yet. So we're gonna check out this heritage wall right here. All oh, those Chinese people. And check this out, math. One plus one equal four. Um, I'm guessing it's uh, daddy plus mommy, and they, you know, made sweet love, and then now there's four of them, like a uh, family. Times two equals 11, so maybe more family. Wow, are there any Chens here? My clan. I know a lot of my clan came from like the, the Tetsu, 
and uh, Fujian province, but oh, right here, Chen Bakhe, right here. So we're probably somehow related, but even though it's spelled Chin, it's the same thing, the Chan. Nowadays, we have a big bell here that says U.S. Immigration Station, Angel Island, 1910. But this was also the wharf where people got off the ships and came into the immigration station. And it wasn't just Chinese people. You had different Asians, the Japanese, South Asians, like the Indians, the Punjabs. You also had New Zealanders. You had people from Europe escaping the Nazis. People from South America. They came from all over the world trying to get into America and check it out. The faces of people from around the world. This should be open now. I'm gonna go check out inside and get edumacated. And these are the beds they slept on. Three bunks, really skinny, really short. I'm sure it's not too comfortable. So for reference, this is how big it is. Does it fit the whole body? So as you can see here, you can see some of the carving of Chinese calligraphy here. And I gotta say, it looks really nice. I mean, they had a lot of time on their hands and when you have a lot of time on your hands, you can do amazing stuff. Not like nowadays, we spend most of our time working. Like if I had to work, I'd probably be a slightly better YouTuber, I'd say. But check it out. Chinese calligraphy right here. So on the second floor, the display here is like the men's dormitory. You have a bunch of men, probably really horny, cramped in here. And check it out. You can see some of their personal belongings. The erhu. You got some. Oh, they're probably gambling over here. <laughs> and they probably wash their faces. Hygiene. Some stuff here, Chinese chess, more games. Cause you know, they would be stuck here for weeks, sometimes months, and even years. So they had a lot of time and they weren't even allowed to go out most of the time. So they would be locked and confined into the barracks over here. So of course you need some stuff to pass time. Check it out. Like I mentioned earlier, they had a lot of time on their hands, so they need entertainment. You have Go, you have Mahjong. They play this nowadays too, and I'm pretty sure I would whip Tree Fitty and coach his ass in Mahjong because I used to play that a lot in college. You have music here, wow. Ping pong, symbols. Oh, ping pong right here, they brought the national sports. That's why Chinese people are so damn good in ping pong. You have the pipa, musician. You have books to read. Things to draw, working on their craftsmen, you gotta do math. <laughs> math never left the culture. And then this is probably where they did some uh, hygienics or some um, medicine here. Ooh. Was that? No, they used to cut hair here. Oh, the barbershop. And this must be the interrogation room. So you would have some dude sitting here interviewing a Chinese person, probably sitting right here, very nervous probably didn't speak English, so you had a translator here. And they would ask questions such as, outside of these, have you ever had any other relatives that were at any time in the US? And if you answer any questions that did not match, you might be detained here even longer, or at worst, sent back to China. So you must have imagined the folks that were being interviewed here must be hella nervous. All right, so the quarters earlier were for Chinese folks, and this is more like the international part. Check it out, you got the Italians here, pictures of their family. You got the Russians, Privyet. The Indians, Namashka. What else do we got here? So you can tell their stuff, their belongings are a little bit different. You got the Germans, you got the violin, <laughs> and the Japanese. Konnichiwa, guys. It was more diverse here, definitely. I wonder how like the social dynamics were here. But wait a minute. Isn't that a Chinese vase? Oh no, probably Japanese. But yeah, like the Chinese, they were pretty much stuck here. Probably very horny as well. And here we have better visual of what life was like back then. Check it out. These guys had dripped. Men waiting 
the uncertainty, would they make it on to the mainland or would they be shipped back to China? Aside from men, you also had a lot of kids here. And here, they did the medical examination to make sure there's no diseases. And oftentimes, they were stripped bare naked when they did the examination. And this part, the interrogation, to make sure that in order to get in, you need to have a US citizen that was a relative. And this is where paper sons and daughters came. I'll explain that in a voiceover. So even though the Chinese Exclusion Act denied Chinese people from naturalization or entry into the U.S., if you were already a U.S. citizen and had children abroad, they were eligible to become a U.S. citizen. In 1906, the massive earthquake in San Francisco destroyed public birth documents, so Chinese men who were already in the U.S. could claim they were born in the U.S., thus U.S. citizens. Some of the Chinese men would travel back to China and claim they made sweet, sweet love to their wives without using protection, and boom, now they've created a child. This made the child eligible to become a U.S. citizen for which they would receive a document. These documents would then be used for their actual children or sold to other people. And this was termed as a slot. So, if you were a Chinese adult living in China and wanted your child to become a U.S. citizen, you can pay some random Chinese American dude with a slot to claim your child as their own. Then, you guys would have to make up a new life story in which your child has to remember by heart because they would be interrogated on Angel Island to make sure the slot holder and your child is related. But of course they weren't. Questions could include details of the immigrant's home and villages, how many times your daddy spanked you for not getting a perfect score in every subject in class, and if you get one little detail wrong, you are at risk of being deported back to China. So these children basically had to memorize and in a way live this made up life, and this is basically what paper sons and daughters were. And after seeing all the dudes dormitory, let's check out the ladies dormitory. I can assure you that they did not pack more than the men. <laughs> Although, kind of curious what kind of stuff they had. Some makeup boxes, I assume. Some oh, little dolls here. Little umbrellas. A lot more clothing than the men's section. So, some things have never changed. <laughs> and I wonder where the kids stayed. Did the kids stay with the, the mom or did they have their own dormitory? I would assume they stayed with the mom. Which makes sense if they had more clothing. So, yeah. You got the Asian style umbrella. And no gambling here. Only the men gambled, I guess. <laughs> wow, it's fascinating. But if the kids stay with their mom, where are the toys at? And this looks a lot more Japanese than Chinese, I reckon. And look at the size. Here's my hand for preference. This has to be a kid size. And this is the last room I reckon. We got maybe a living room. So girls are probably here, you know, knitting stuff, having tea, eating rice, some snacks. You got some, uh, what do you call those? Sewing kits? I don't know what this is. A heater? And then this is where Asian moms beat their kids to learn English. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So in this display, aside from the Chinese, the Japanese were also detained here during World War II here on Angel Island. And this is their story. Japanese Americans from the US West Coast. We all know that the Japanese living in America, they were put in internal camps such as Manzanar, but Angel Island apparently was one of the places they were detained as well. Alrighty, so we are done with the detention center and gotta say it's very interesting seeing it up close. Now, the conditions are often depicted as very bad and rightfully so, but last year, me, Tree Fitty, Mike and Gary, we had the honor and privilege to meet a guy who actually stayed here, Bob Hong, and this is what he said. How was living conditions in Angel Island? Well, it was uh, good for me, you know, better than my life back in China. We had at least something to eat. So, you know, it really depends on your mentality and your perspective. But now, we will check out, ooh, what is this? The old hospital. Oh man, this looks hella old. But over here, it looks hella new. <laughs> what the hell? The hospital. Ooh, titties. 
All right, let's go check out the old hospital and whatever this part is. Uh, so the hospital has been changed into like a exhibit hall with displays telling you the immigrants from all over the world that came over here to Angel Island, not just the Chinese. And over here we have a gift shop. Wow, where the gifts at? <laughs> Huh. Wow, look at this. A huge door. Compared to this one, this is like the American door. Wow. It probably makes it easier to like bring stuff in here. There's also upstairs, the medical exams of the early 1900s. Check it out. Flex your muscles. Squat towards the ground. Cover your face. Cross your arms. Say your birth year. Think about your doctor's visit. I remember my doctor used to grab my balls and tell me to cough and I had no idea what that is for to this day. So in terms of Chinese American history, I think that's about it. But this is still a big island with a lot of stuff to see so we're gonna walk around and check if there's other interesting things around here. And after a short walk, we've made it to Fort McDowell. Check this out. Looks abandoned, which I love it. And wow, there's a big ship over there. So I was kind of reading back then, they used this area to process World War I vets before they went out to uh, deployment or when they came back. So this used to be a military complex. And this is what it looks like now after it became decommissioned. Structure unsafe, keep off, ha. Ah. Nice. This will be a great place to take some urban photography. Ooh. And over here, we have the post exchange. For those who don't know what a post exchange, we call it the PX in the military. This is where you buy stuff, like a market kind of thing. 1910. As we're walking through this area, I wonder if these are housing for officers. And then down there, that's where you have the enlisted members living in the barracks. Hmm. You know what? Let's go check it out real quick. Oh, employee residence. It's actually really nice here. They can live here. They have a nice view. Although it could be a little lonely and disconnected from society a little bit. But still, if you're gonna give me a place to live for a job, I take it. You know, I'm really glad they kept all these like historic buildings intact, kind of here. Some places they actually like remove them, like Sweeney Ridge, but over here, ooh. Oh, a suspicious person. Yeah. Commanding officer. Wow, and this is where they would put big guns. A lot of forts here, or batteries around the Bay Area. You will see this. Is there anything up there, coach? All right, so after walking around the entire island, which is like five and a half miles, but we're gonna round it up to six because we walked a lot extra. We're back to the dock and now we're just waiting for the ferry back to San Francisco and then we're gonna go to Chinatown, get some food and end this damn video. Check it out. Super nice today. Blessed. Wow. And 
just like the Chinese people back then, we've made it to San Francisco and now we're heading to Chinatown. <laughs> Let's go! Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so first time to Angel Island, super fun, lots of photography opportunities, but of course, winter for the Chinese American history. And after going there, I gotta say, really appreciate how our predecessors made life easier now compared to back then. And maybe it's our turn to make the future generation's life better than now because there's still a lot of work to do. As for this video, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, Jack's off.